Well, son of a So I figured out why it's not running. Among a hundred other things, it doesn't have a gas tank. And I'm pretty sure it needs one of those. So I need to make a gas tank because the original one, which is only 11 gallons, uh, I'll burn that up before I get to the end of the block. So there's a few criteria for the gas tank. That is that it needs to be as big as possible and also it needs to be removable and it needs to be in the same place that it was originally because that's the only place there is really. And that's stuffed in between the radiator and the firewall. And also I like to have it where you can, it, you fill it up through the normal gas door. I mean, so you don't have to like open up the hood like a race car, you know, to fill it up. This is when I start building it, breaking out the saws and welders, but I'm not gonna do that this time. Got the radiator lines in, and you can see uh, the area that we're working with here. And it's the steering column we have to go around. And if I wanna tuck the gas tank into the back here, then it comes out this way, which means the radiator will have to come out first. And then it runs into this thing. There are several ways to mount the gas tank. The two ways I consider were using a flange mount or a tray mount using straps. I almost pulled the trigger on the flange mount idea, which is basically a flange welded to the perimeter of the tank and then bolted down to the body. But the tank would become part of the structure of the car, which adds stress to the tank, which causes cracks, leaks, fire. So I opted for the tried and true method of using a bottom tray and straps along the top. For the bottom tray, I use three quarter inch angle iron, which as far as I know only comes in this crusty, scaly form and only an 11 gauge. Steel is steel and once the mill scale is ground off where it is welded, it will do just fine as long as it is painted and nobody ever sees it. I guess I could have brake bent some cold rolled steel, but sometimes I'm just looking for the easy way out. Steady. I'm mounting the back of the tray to the sheet metal firewall. This is just a coupon representing the actual piece that I will bend later. Drilling the actual piece for plug welds. I swear God invented MIG welders just for plug welds. The original radiator cap location is getting tangled up in my fabrication plans, so move it. The metal I use for the gas tank is 5052 aluminum, 90 thousandths. The rod I use is 5356, no, what is the rod? 5356, 5356. The metal I use for the gas tank is 5250. Come on, get it together. Wait a minute, hang on. We get the point, enough with the welding. All right, just for the heck of it, let's see what kind of fuel tanks Amazon sells. You know what, let's put in Corvair. Corvair gas tanks. You're kidding me. $114? <laughs> I spent a week building that gas thing. Doing a little sheet metal finish work here, which will also be a place to mount the cross member. I know it doesn't look like much, and it really isn't. 
Speaking of cross members, here it is, being milled with the bolt collars. Never had the mill tilted to 30 something degrees before. I spent entirely way too much time on this thing. We'll mount this the way I recommend is just mount one side first. So I drilled a pilot hole. This is a weld nut. And then once that's in and welded, then drill this one. Instead of trying to drill them both at the same time because it things walk around and move. For those who don't know, this is a quarter 20 bolt <gasps> and weld nut. I was going to put some one inch kicks going this way with another bolt going through there for added stability. But this thing is in there so good, I don't think it needs any more. And my motto is keep moving forward. So if you're wondering how this is going to work, I'm going to use these cute little things here, put them in here, and they're going to have straps going over the top and it pulls it down tight. So these are for the plug holes, plug welds. I just added the side there to add some support to it. When you're working with a unibody car, you just have to get used to the fact that you're mounting a lot of stuff to sheet metal. So back to this piece I've already wasted too much time on. Essentially, I had to weld cups in to receive the clevises. These are the posts and they have to be extended three inches. So I bought some 3 8 inch uh, stainless rod. Just to be perfectly clear, the fuel pump only allows for a tank depth of 12 inches, but mine is 15. And that's why I'm making longer fuel pump support rods. Oh, they turned out pretty good. There you have it. I made them a little long ordered some fuel lines or corrugated they're like they're like these and I like these because they're real thin so when you're clamping stuff it's it's not real thick and uh, I just had to get longer ones so I have a little problem After welding this up, it appears my 15 inch sender is about 3 16 inch too tall now. I'm going to cut the bottom of the tank out and extend it one quarter of an inch. Actually, let's take this off and find out what's in here and if we can shorten it. In order to install and remove the tank, the fill hose and burp line had to be accessible from the top. I can't remember where I got this rubber edging from.
Everything has to be modified, including the filler neck. Hundred and fifty four, right? So what did we learn today? That we should have bought the gas tank from Amazon? Besides that, absolutely nothing. Sure we did. Hundred and thirty four pounds. Sixteen gallons. And that's how big my tank is.